Anamorphic lenses can expand the viewing angle on a smaller sensor, making them ideal for capturing wide-angle shots and achieving a grand cinematic experience. We've used many Cine lenses in our studio, but when Suray sent us their 50mm T2.9 anamorphic lens, we were very excited to test that out. Suray also hooked us up with a 1.25x anamorphic adapter too. We've been playing with the lens and adapter for quite a few days, and in today's video, we're going to share that experience. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Well, out of the box, we got a nice pouch, some paperwork, and a beautiful Suray 50mm. This lens weighs less than 2.4 pounds without the mounting cap. Being an anamorphic lens, it weighs more than your average lens, but considering other anamorphic lenses out in the market right now, it's pretty decent. The outer shell of the body is made of aluminum construction and has a soft finish to it. And the 1.25x adapter is also made from the same material as the lens. Markings on the lens are nicely engraved in both imperial and metric. The focus and aperture rings are geared and can be perfectly lined up, as they are at the exact same distance from the lens mount. Its optical system consists of 16 elements in 13 groups. The ring has a focus throw of close to 95.5 degrees, and it comes with an 82mm filter thread, so you can use any CPL or optical ND filter with it. Overall, the build quality is premium and feels solid on hand. Generally speaking, T-stops are used much more in the filmmaking industry than in the photography world. T-stops refer to the transmission of light through all the lens interiors like the glass elements. Now the Sarui 50mm transmission wing goes from T2.9 to T16. And the best part is this is a full frame anamorphic lens. Moreover, it has an anamorphic squeeze aspect ratio of 1.6 which means it can capture a 1.6 times wider field of view and then squeeze that out of the camera's image sensor. Depending on which camera you pair this lens with and the mode you're shooting in, you'll get different aspect ratios. Once the image is de-squeezed in the post, it ended up with a 2.8 to 1 aspect ratio, which is slightly more widescreen than the traditional cinema scope of 2.4 to 1. We could punch in or zoom in to get that cine aspect ratio, but while doing that, it loses a bit of resolution. When we paired the 1.25x adapter with the lens on 16x9, we noticed the edges of the lens. That's because 2x anamorphic is meant to be shot in the open gate or a 3 to 2 aspect ratio. If you shoot in higher resolution like 4K or 6K, the drop in resolution won't bother you that much. But if you're a fan of the sharpest or the cleanest image, then you shouldn't get into anamorphic lenses, because by nature, anamorphic lenses distort the image they capture with a wide field of view and squeeze into an image sensor. Then when you de-squeeze, there will be some sort of artifacts. Considering this is an anamorphic lens, it gave us surprisingly sharp footage. Many anamorphic characteristics like wider field of view, oval bokeh, and horizontal lens flares were present. We got a horizontal blue light streak whenever there was a strong light source. If you don't want the flares, you can remove those by controlling the exposure on the camera. But we honestly liked the flare because of the cinematic look it portrayed. But we have to admit, the secondary ghost flare was noticeable, which was sometimes annoying. The bokeh was fairly pleasant, as this lens has 10 aperture blades, and we didn't face any glaring issues with it. The minimum focus distance of this lens is 2.5 feet at 0.75 meters, and as we mentioned earlier, the focus throw is 95.5 degrees, which is short. We've used other Cine lenses that have very long focus throws, where focus pulling was much smoother. Now if we take a look at the 1.25x adapter, it's essentially an anamorphic front lens adapter that you can use on other spherical or anamorphic lenses. The biggest problem with this kind of adapter is in focus, because you'd have to focus on your main lens and then set the focus of your front element perfectly, which is quite impossible. But with this Saroy adapter, you just mount it on the thread, then set the main lens focus distance to infinity and simply focus with the ring on the adapter. 
To adjust the angle of the adapter, press the red button, which allows the adapter to rotate 360 degrees. And once you find a suitable position, let go of the button. It'll lock that. That's it. When we mounted the adapter on our Saroy 50mm, we got a 2x squeeze, which provided thinner bokeh and a shallower depth of field, which was very impressive. With an anamorphic lens, you'll get reduced sharpness and increased distortion closer to the edges of the image. With the Saroy 50mm anamorphic lens, we found the overall effect is softer and got more dramatic lens flares due to the extra glass elements inside the body of the lens. But this is what we call a cinematic look. We noticed slight wobbles in the corners and sides of the images. On post, we were able to edit those around. Saroy 50mm comes in native mount for RF, L, E, and Z mount camera systems, so keep that in mind when you're going for it. For documentaries or commercials, this is a great option. And considering the price and other anamorphic lenses out there, we highly recommend the Saroy 50mm T2.9. Please subscribe to our channel for more content like this and do share your thoughts in the comments section below.